My dearly beloved in Christ, this week we celebrate the special feast of St. Michael and the nine choirs of angels, which will be on Thursday. And this feast is meant to be not only the principal feast of St. Michael, but also a feast day honoring all the members of the nine choirs of blessed spirits. Almighty God created the angels, and the angels are magnificent creatures. They have no body, they are pure spirits, but they are endowed with tremendous intellect and other gifts. And they must be beautiful to behold, yet we cannot see them with our bodily eyes. And sadly, there's the old saying, out of sight, out of mind. If you don't see someone or something, you forget about it. How often do we think about the angels? How often do you honor your guardian angel? How often do we pray to the angels? And yet they are very powerful intercessors. And we must remember that. St. Paul tells us our battle is not a battle of flesh and blood, but it is a battle against the spirits of wickedness from on high. It is a spiritual battle of good versus evil. And in that battle, we have these powerful advocates, the angels. We know that when God created the angels, just as with Adam and Eve, he gave them a test. He was not going to give them the magnificent beatific vision without them earning it. They had a test. Now, we don't know the exact nature of that test. Theologians have speculated that it might have been that they were given the knowledge that there would eventually be a redeemer for the human race who would be both God and man, and that they would have to bow to him, to submit to him, even though he had, in addition to his divine nature, he would have a human nature, and that that was too much for the pride of Lucifer and those who followed him. At any rate, whatever the test was, Lucifer shouted out, I will not serve. And about a third of the angels followed him in his rebellion. They were cast into hell by St. Michael and the good angels. So here St. Michael is an example for us of fortitude. St. Michael's words, who is like unto God? Quis ut Deus? Who can be like God? Who will dare to try to become the equal of God? And again, St. Michael is, is an example to us of fortitude and also overcoming human respect, standing up for the truth, that all-important virtue of fortitude, courage. So St. Michael <clears throat> became the leader of the heavenly host. And we find St. Michael mentioned several times in Scripture. He's mentioned in the book of Daniel in the Old Testament, he is mentioned a number of times without using his name, but scripture scholars believe it is St. Michael that is referred to in different passages. He was looked upon as the guardian of the chosen people in the Old Testament, leading them out of Egypt, protecting them, the guardian of God's chosen people. In the New Testament, we find the name of Michael mentioned by the apostle St. Jude in his epistle. He talks about how St. Michael contended with the devil over the body of Moses. The devil wanted to use the body of Moses to cause the Jewish people to commit the sin of idolatry because Moses was so powerful and worked so many miracles and so forth. And that St. Michael secretly buried the body of Moses. But we also read this passage from the book of the Apocalypse. And there was a battle in heaven. Michael and his angels battled with the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels. And they did not prevail. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And that great dragon was cast down, the ancient serpent, he who is called the devil and Satan, who leads astray the whole world. And he was cast down to the earth, and with him his angels were cast down. So this passage describes that initial battle, but it also refers to the final battle between 
good and evil, between God and Satan. St. Michael taking up the standard for Almighty God and defeating Antichrist and defeating the devil. So we should invoke St. Michael. He has always been honored in the church. There are ver various shrines, some important pilgrimage shrines in Europe to St. Michael that go back many, many centuries. The faithful honor him because if he was the protector of God's chosen people in the Old Testament, then he is also the guardian of the church, the protector of the church in the New Testament. He's also pictured with the scales, the scales of justice, because it is St. Michael that conducts the blessed into heaven. He is there at death. He is the angel of judgment. And we can appeal to him to help us in that battle against the evil spirits at the end of our lives. And if we honor him throughout our lives, he will be there to assist us at that moment. Now, you've probably heard the story that is told of St. Michael, or rather, told of Pope Leo XIII. And the story goes like this. And the, even the date is given on October the 13th, 1884. So it was exactly 33 years before the great miracle of the sun at Fatima, at Our Lady's final apparition. So Pope Leo XIII had Mass in his private chapel, and after Mass, he went into an ecstasy. And when he came out of that ecstasy, he went, he appeared to be very troubled, he unvested, he went to his study and sat down and he wrote the prayer to St. Michael that we pray every day at Mass. And when the various officials who were present cardinals, whoever, asked him what happened, what was this ecstasy all about, he told them that he heard two voices, and it was the voices of Christ and the devil close to the tabernacle. And the devil said to our Lord, if you give me more power, more freedom, I will destroy your church in one, within 100 years. And our Lord said, you have your greater freedom and you have your hundred years. Now you look at that statement that that was in 1884. Vatican II was in the early 1960s and it brought forth the new mass and all of these new teachings. Now we know the church cannot be destroyed because Jesus himself tells us the gates of hell will not prevail. His church will last till the end of time. We call that the indefectibility of the church. But he did not guarantee that his church would always endure with large numbers. And so we have seen many Catholics fall away from the faith, accept new teachings, and in fact, lose their faith. And we, all, we know that the devil has been very successful. So Pope Leo XIII sat down and he wrote that prayer to St. Michael. And he prescribed that there should be at every low Mass, we don't do them after a high Mass, after Mass, the prayers, three Hail Marys, the Hail Holy Queen, the prayer that goes with it, St. Michael prayer, the invocation to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, that these should be recited after every Mass for the welfare of Holy Mother, the Church the freedom and exaltation of our Holy Mother Church. And it is significant that Paul VI did away with those Leonine prayers, as we call them, after Pope Leo. He did away with them in 1964. And they have not been done since in the Novus Ordo Church. So how important it is to invoke St. Michael in our battles against the devil and his temptations. I know many of you have the wonderful practice of adding after your daily rosary that prayer to St. Michael, the Hail Holy Queen, the prayer to St. Michael. It's a very important prayer to say. We also add a prayer to our Blessed Mother that, as the Queen of the Angels after the rosary because we need Our Lady's intercession, but we also need the guardianship of the angels. They are very powerful and they will come to our assistance if we invoke them. So let us not forget about the existence of the angels just because we cannot see them. Our holy guardian angel, who is our very own assistant and intercessor, 
who puts good thoughts into our mind and prays for us, as well as St. Michael and all of the legions of heaven to intercede for us in our battle against the devil and his temptations. And with their intercession, we can and shall prevail. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.